Hey everyone, it's Jeremiah from Alamance Battleground and I'm here with the first installment of our real-time video series uh, following Governor Tryon's march west into the backcountry to face the regulators. Today is April 24th and 249 years ago today the militia was preparing to begin their march west into the backcountry. This was the culmination of several months of planning on the part of Governor Tryon and militia commanders, a lot of correspondence, a lot of attempts to procure supplies and create an army out of the willing citizens of North Carolina. And most of that work was done here at Tryon Palace in New Bern. This was the seat of government for the province, province of North Carolina, and it was also the residence of Governor Tryon. And it also happened to be one of the flashpoints of regulator dissent uh, in its construction and particularly the way that it was funded. When Governor Tryon moved his residence from Brunswick Town to New Bern, he uh, had a new tax levy that was going to pay for the construction of a new building that would serve as his home. And that tax, when it was levied, was the same amount regardless of what income you had or what your economic status was. So the poorest farmer in North Carolina in the backcountry was paying the same amount as the largest wealthiest land speculator. The regulators felt that this was a regressive tax and so when this building was constructed they derisively called it Tryon's Palace. When it was constructed though it was one of the most impressive buildings in the province of North Carolina and during the last half of the month of April in 1771 this really was the main hub of activity as the militia was coming together and they were prepared to begin their expedition. Uh, about three days ago in 1771 there was the uh, detachment from Carteret County that was the first to arrive. There followed the next day on April 22nd by the Craven County militia. They are also arriving in New Bern uh, at the same time as a ship is arriving from New York with supplies for that militia. Uh, now to talk a little bit about how that militia would have been dressed and what they carried uh, is a member of the staff of Tryon Palace, uh, Mr. Gary Riggs. Gary? Hello, good afternoon. I'm dressed as a Craven militia member. My dress is basically a civilian type dress. There was no uniforms of the time. What I have on is a hunting shirt made out of linen. I got linen knee breeches on. One of the regulations, and it was actually documented that you had uh, a yellow cockade, black leggings with red ties. That was one of the identifying traits that actually uh, helped identify the militia that was with Governor Tryon at this time. Now, some of the equipment that I have, of course, I have a civilian, civilian fouling piece, which is a smoothbore muzzle-loading musket. I have a haversack, which contains all the food and rations that I would have for at least three days march. I have a water bottle, a, a canteen made out of tin. I also carry a hunting knife, and I have a uh, tomahawk in my belt. On my back, you can probably see from the angle, is a knapsack. Some soldiers would have a knapsack, whatever they could have, whatever they could make. Some soldiers would take their blanket and roll up anything that they think they would need and carry it across their shoulder. In my knapsack, I have a blanket, fire making kit, a night hat, an extra pair of socks. So very meager rashes to be marching from Newburn all the way to Burlington. So, and the leather shoes, of course, is made out of leather. By the time they got halfway there, most of them had already probably fallen apart. So, and now I'm going to turn this back over to Jeremiah. Thanks, Gary. Now, with the Craven and Carteret detachments already in New Bern and a ship uh, pulling into the harbor in New Bern, there are the final pieces of the militia that uh, allows for them to march forward and begin their expedition into the backcountry. Really, they had been waiting for this ship to come from New York because it is bearing military supplies that have come from British military commander Thomas Gage, who has his headquarters in New York. Tryon had written a letter to Gage requesting different supplies and Gage is able to come through with flags, drums, 
cooking equipment, extra leggings, extra cockades, and most importantly, he has two three pound field pieces, cannons, that are on this ship that are going to be carried by the militia against the regulators. This is going to form the backbone of Tryon's artillery contingent, and it's going to give him a very big advantage militarily during this campaign. Uh, the Craven and Carteret detachments actually assist in pulling those artillery pieces here to Tryon Palace on April 23rd of 1771. And again, 249 years ago today, Governor Tryon has one final review with these detachments and then they begin their march west. They've got a long march ahead of them. They are headed towards Colonel William Bryan's, which is approximately 100 yards away, uh, excuse me, 100 miles away. And that is going to be the junction or rendezvous for the Eastern County militias from Carteret and Craven, and then the different militias from the Southeastern District, from the Wilmington District, which is coming a little bit more north to connect with those other militia companies. Once those forces have united at Colonel Bryan's, Governor Tryon will lead them as commander in chief, and they will continue due west towards the settlements of the regulators. Now, that march that's beginning today is not going to be done with Governor Tryon present. He's actually going to stay here at the palace for a few more days. He has to send out a couple more pieces of correspondence. He has to send out a note to the Orange County Militia, having them send out a guard to Hart's Mill to make sure that the supplies that are being gathered there are guarded against any regulator attacks. And he is also tying up loose ends before he leaves New Bern for what he is considering uh, will be a uh, multi-week or multi-month military military campaign. He's not entirely sure when he's going to be back here uh, again. Uh, so he will be back uh, uh, leaving this uh, area on April 27th, and I'm going to be back here in New Bern on the 27th of April to talk a little bit more about what Governor Tryon had to do to raise this militia from when he decided that it needed to be raised to when they were able to leave here on April 24th. Uh, so that concludes our video for today. Uh, I want you to like and share our videos if you do enjoy these, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll be sure to respond in the comments, or if appropriate, we will leave some uh, answers in subsequent videos. Uh, thank you. I'll see you again on April 27th. Have a great day.